my Big Ten predictions for the 2020 college football season are ready to go. This year is different for obvious reasons. Let's go ahead and break it down right now and see how things are going to unfold here on Intermittent Sports. Hello and welcome to Intermittent Sports, the channel where we go over the Detroit Pistons, Detroit Lions, Detroit Tigers, and Michigan Wolverines, as well as the conferences, divisions, leagues, whatever that they're in. So if you're a fan of one of the teams within all that, or you're a fan of one, two, three, or all four of the teams that I mentioned earlier, go ahead and subscribe right here, hit that bell notification so you won't miss any of the action. Today we rank the Big Ten teams from worst to first. We have 14 teams in total, so let's get right into it. Now, I don't want to lose your interest right out the gate, so let's go ahead and get rid of the eight bottom feeders in rapid pace, starting with Rutgers. And honestly, I have them losing all eight of their games this season. Most likely games that they can win is versus Illinois and at Maryland, but again, I have them losing both. Rutgers goes 0-8. Nebraska wanted to play football so badly this season, and I'm not quite sure why. They get rewarded with Ohio State and Penn State as their cross-divisional opponents. Because of that, I have them finishing last in the West. They'll beat Illinois, and that is it. One in seven for the Cornhuskers. Welcome still to the Big Ten. I have Maryland projected at next to last in the Big Ten East. Really tough schedule for them. I think they're going to pull the upset at Indiana and they're going to win the last game of the season home against Rutgers. Two and six for the Terps. That's it. For sixth place in the West, I'm going to roll with Northwestern. They're going to win just three games versus Maryland, versus Nebraska, and at Michigan State. They seem to match up well against Sparty over the years. Three and five for the Wildcats this season. Michigan State is in complete rebuild mode. They lost their coach, of course, and now they lost a lot of talent from last year's team. It's going to be a rough year for first-year coach Mel Tucker. Now, every single first-year coach is looking for that one special win that can help gain the momentum. But I don't think it's going to come from Mel because those possibilities are at Iowa, at Michigan, versus Ohio State, and at Penn State. Good luck on that. They'll beat Rutgers in the opener and Maryland at home. That's 2-6 and six for the Spartans and a 5th place finish in the East. Michigan State's mirror image in the West will be Illinois. Now I'm going to give them three wins like I did Northwestern. And I have them beating the Cats, so they're going to win that tiebreaker. Their other two wins are going to be at Rutgers and an upset bid at home against Purdue. Indiana's up next here in this rapid sequence. They're going to finish fourth in the East with wins over Rutgers, Michigan State, and Purdue. Indiana is a team that's going to be hurt mightily by this shortened season. Their cross-divisional foe is Wisconsin, unfortunately. Had they gotten some of the tune-up games at the beginning of the season, they may have had a real shot at a real bowl game. I don't know how that's going to work. I think everybody's going to one, but a real bowl game is what I'm talking about. Without those tune-up games, they're in trouble. Now, I do have them at three and five, but as a Michigan fan, I have to be honest, I'm a little concerned. Here. They're going to be hungry for that surprise win of the season like I was talking about with Michigan State earlier and we have not fared well against Indiana in recent years. That is not a game the Wolverines can take lightly. And their counterpart in the West will be the Purdue Boilermakers. Rondell Moore has decided to opt back in. That is excellent news for this football team. I don't see a world where they can win at Wisconsin or at Minnesota, but the rest of the games on their slate are very winnable. They do not get Penn State, Ohio State, or Michigan as any of their cross-divisional games. I don't know how they looked into that. Aside from the two losses that I already mentioned, I'm going to add at Illinois as an upset pick, as I said earlier, and at Indiana. Purdue goes 4-4. Four so remaining in the East will be a clash and brawl between the Ohio State Buckeyes, Penn State Nittany Lions, and Michigan Wolverines. And in the West, no surprise at all, it's coming down to the Wisconsin Badgers, Minnesota Golden Gophers, and Iowa Hawkeyes. Let's sort all this mess out and see who is going to finish where when all is said and done. Now, I probably shouldn't give out my secret juice right away, but this is so obvious that I can't quite keep it in. As much as it pains me to say it, the Ohio State Buckeyes are going to win the East. Their cross-divisional games are Nebraska and Illinois. Lucky them. They'll win both of those games, no problem. The gimme games within their division are Rutgers, Maryland, Indiana, and Michigan State. So really their schedule comes down to at Penn State on Halloween and against Michigan on December 12th. As a Michigan fan, I'm no idiot. Until we prove that we can beat them, I'm going to go with the Bucks, aka the Nuts. And while the Penn State game is on Halloween, there's no whiteout this time around. It'll be a test for Ohio State, no doubt, but at the end of the day, they're going to win that game as well. They'll finish the season with an unblemished 8-0 record. This Penn State matchup at the beginning of the season is going to loom large though. Now they could get upset by Indiana on the road, but outside of that, it's only real focus not named Ohio State is Iowa and Michigan. If their game was at Iowa, I'd take the Hawkeyes. 
but it's not. Penn State will win that one, and then the game against Michigan will be an absolute battle. Since 2016, the home team in that series has won the game. This time, that home team is Michigan. I'm going to stick to that trend and pick the Wolverines here. Penn State finishes the season at 6 and 2. Michigan didn't get quite as lucky as Ohio State with their cross-divisional opponents, did they? They ended up instead with Minnesota on the road the first game of the season and Wisconsin at home. And in my opinion, we're going to go one and one in those games. I'm thinking the loss is going to be at Minnesota. Now, I haven't looked at the extent of Jack Cohn's injury for the Badgers, but if he's not able to play or if he's not 100%, that of course is a big deal. But even if, God willing, and I truly do mean that, Jack Cohn is okay, I still think Minnesota is the more likely loss here. It's at Minnesota, Rashad Bateman opted back in and Nico Collins and Ambry Thomas weren't so nice to us. They gone. On top of all that, we're working on a brand new offensive line and a brand new quarterback into the system. All of this while on the road. That, my friend, is a recipe for disaster. I know for me and I would imagine most reasonable Michigan fans, a 6-2 and two finish would be a pleasant surprise. Anything worse than that, even with all the turnover that's been happening over this year, and the fan base will have every right to be upset and looking into the coaching portal because this will be what? Year 6 and there's still no surprise or shock. It's the same thing, the same media mediocrity year after year. That or start to pay the head man a little bit less. At some point, results have to matter more than excuses. And now we look at the wild wild west and we'll start with Iowa. The Hawks stay at home against Sparty and travel to Happy Valley to face the Nittany Lions in their cross divisional matchups. They'll split those two games one and one. As I said earlier, I picked Purdue in the upset over Iowa on opening day. I also had the Hawkeyes losing the last game of the season against Wisconsin. So with that, five and three will be the finish. Let's see how that fares against the other two big dogs in the division. Now, of course, I had Minnesota in week one beating Michigan. And as I said just now, I have them losing to Iowa, despite that game being at home for the Golden Gophers. Outside of those two matchups, and even though Halloween is during all of this time, their schedule's not that scary. They'll run the table against Maryland, Illinois, Purdue, Northwestern, and Nebraska. I remembered all that. That means they're 6-1 and one outside of that game against the Wisconsin Badgers. So let's move on over to Wisconsin to see who I think's going to win the Big Ten West. So you now know that I have Michigan beating Wisconsin and Iowa falling to the Badgers at home. That means Wisconsin can ill afford to slip up against anyone else. Will Illinois pull it off the way they did last year? Nah, not this time around. How about Nebraska? Nope, I think not. Versus Purdue? Getting warmer, but not quite there. At Northwestern? Nah, you're getting cold again. Versus Indiana? Yeah, that's a no for me, dog. So you think then that the Big Ten West is going to come down to the matchup on November 28th between Minnesota and Wisconsin? Yup. And who do you have winning? Well, I have Wisconsin winning that game. And now here's my Big Ten championship prediction. Ohio State versus Wisconsin. Ohio State takes this one. 35 to 24. Now guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. And even though I'm a Michigan fan, I tried to be as non-biased as I possibly could be here. Now, of course, I'm hoping for a different outcome, but for right now, Ohio State versus Wisconsin, once again, sounds the most reasonable to me. On this channel, we cover the Michigan Wolverines, Detroit Tigers, Detroit Pistons, and Detroit Lions, as well as the conferences, leagues, divisions, whatever that they're in. We'd love it if you join the community and join in on the fun. Make sure you comment below your thoughts. Would we get right? Would we get wrong? Let's discuss. Like this video if you liked it. If you did, you're probably going to enjoy one of these two videos that are on your screen now. Never mind that I just left the screen. I'm still here. You could uh, click on one of those. It'd be great. Which one? Which one's more enticing? Ooh, I like that one. Oh, you like that one? I mean, it, it, it don't matter. Just choose one. It's fine. Bye.